Welcome to my review of the German Physics HRS-130 Hi-Fi speakers. But I'm also jointly reviewing German Physics Emperor Integrated Amplifier, but there will be a separate review video for the amplifier. So this video is all about the speakers. And these are speakers that are different from a manufacturer that is doing things really quite differently. And I think that is a great place to start this review because most of the hi-fi speakers on the market are designed around a common theme. And occasionally you'll see a manufacturer do something different and you think to yourself, are they doing something different to try and stand out in the market? Or are they doing something different because there are some genuine technical and or sonic advantages to being different? And I think when you look at the form factor of the German Physics HRS-130, I think them being different is pretty obvious. But why they are different and actually extremely clever is likely not obvious. And I think that these are speakers that definitely need some extra technical explanation about their design outside of the usual specifications. But for the sake of consistency, the HRS-130 are a two-way floor standing speaker with a custom DDD driver and a 10 inch bass driver sealed in their bottom. They are four ohms rated to 120 watts RMS with a sensitivity of 86.9 decibels being very German precise. And one area where they are different or definitely stand out is that they are an omnidirectional speaker, which in 2021 is a pretty rare thing. From the top down view, they appear spherical, which makes total sense for a speaker with an omnidirectional radiation pattern. But they have an octagonal shaped cabinet. So different and different again. And German physics are industry wide famous for their development of a unique custom speaker driver called the DDD driver, which is the cone shaped element you can see on the top of the speaker. And this is a proprietary custom made speaker driver that is made from carbon fiber and the exact same driver is used across all German physics speakers. But as the speakers start to get larger, German physics simply use multiple DDD drivers. And this is a really clever speaker driver that is capable of producing sound waves from 70 hertz to 30 kilohertz. Let that sink in for a second. However, German physics conservatively use the DDD driver from 200 hertz to 24 kilohertz, again, in all of their speakers. And why is this important? Well, it's because nearly all of the sound the speaker is producing is being produced by one driver. So that means no crossover is needed anywhere in the mid range or vocal region, like with traditional speakers. There is no time alignment issues to solve like you have between a traditional tweeter and mid-range driver array. And all of the sound is being produced by the same driver made of the same material for tonal coherence. And there are other benefits too. The way the DDD driver works is insanely clever and it moves in three different ways to be able to produce all of this sound and with the naked eye you cannot see it moving at all. Sound literally just appears from nowhere and we will get to that in a second. And to save the video becoming overly long and overly technical, instead I suggest you go on the German Physics website and read all of the information about the DDD driver, its history, how it works, if you'd like to know more, and I'll leave a link below in the video description box. But one thing I definitely want you to consider and think about, and then maybe let me know down below in the comments section, can you think of another speaker where the mid-range and treble drivers have no baffle and also have no cabinet around them. Besides maybe electrostatic type speakers, can you think of any? And then while you're doing that, maybe think about the technical benefits of having the mid-range and tweeter driver with no baffle around them and no cabinet per se around them either. So yes, the DDD driver is definitely unconventional, but it's actually very clever when you think about it. Then for bass, as I mentioned, there is a 10 inch down firing driver that is very hard to get on camera, so I didn't try, in a sealed cabinet with a lot of attentions to details paid to keep the cabinet quiet. The octagonal shape adds rigidity because the smaller individual panels are naturally stiffer. On the inside, there is a frequency specific Helmholtz resonator installed to reduce problematic internal pressure. And the walls of the cabinet are lined with a technology called Hauerfon, which is a material that is added that converts vibration energy into heat. Again, quietening down the cabinet even more. 
And if you do the obligatory tap test with the HRS-130, they probably don't feel quite as inert as maybe a Wilson speaker, but they definitely feel inert enough. What's interesting is the HRS-130 are quite modest sized and quite modest in weight, which may prove really useful for owners who want to maybe pull the speakers out into the room to listen to them and then put them back after to keep the wife happy. And this is a really important factor to take into account with a speaker like the HRS-130 because they are an omnidirectional speaker, they do need to be placed out into the room. And in the manual, it suggested 1.2 meters from the walls. And this is because of the room's reflectivity. And these are speakers where some sound reflection in the room can be of benefit to the listener's psychoacoustic sound perception. However, in my room, due to its limited size, I couldn't have the speakers as far as 1.2 meters from the walls, which possibly means some of their sound was compromised. However, the level of acoustic treatment installed probably helped me in some regards, but I found adding quite a bit of diffusion around the speakers helped to improve their sound from an imaging point of view. And I did have to put in quite a lot of work moving the HRS 130 around in my room to try and find what was the optimal compromise between soundstage, imaging, clarity, soundstage depth, which is the all important part with these speakers and bass response. Measuring the HRS 130 as part of a full Dirac Live calibration was very interesting because I could see very clearly the DDD driver is the wideband driver German physics claim it is. And yes, they maybe don't measure as buttery smooth as some other conventional speakers have in my room, but above 200 Hertz where the DDD driver starts, you can or maybe cannot see any crossover dips, which is a positive. And you can see great treble extension out to at least 20 kilohertz, which is impressive as a lot of other dedicated tweeters have rolled off long before this when I've measured them again in my room. But I appreciate that so far, this has all just been technical talk. What do the HRS 130 actually sound like? Well, I want to say that they are all about soundstage, but that would be doing them a disservice and an injustice, but they are at the same time very much about soundstage, a genuine three-dimensional, genuinely holographic soundstage that starts pretty much at the plane of the speakers and goes backwards, goes away from you, which is why I think it's important to have the speakers obviously placed more out into the room to allow this sound perception illusion to happen. And creating a soundstage like this with this level of clarity and genuine depth from my experience is a rare thing. Yes, other speakers create holographic sound with a very clearly defined sound stage, but very rarely do they create it with as much depth as I have been experiencing from the HRS 130. But what difference does this actually make if you pull speakers maybe out into the room and they create their sound stage with depth going away from you? Why is that really any different to maybe placing speakers away from you and then creating a sound stage coming forwards? When you look at it in, in simple terms like that, you would think it wouldn't make any difference there is no difference, but actually in practice, and definitely with some music, it is different, it just feels different. The experience is different. And again, I think with some music, listening to speakers that create this soundstage depth going away from you, definitely helps to create the illusion that you are seeing something happening in front of you. And that is a very interesting concept because <laughs> hearing sound and then actually seeing something happen in front of you, that is the whole real, that is the whole concept of high-end hi-fi. That is the, the magic of high-end audio. And because that is so, I suppose, magical in terms of the experience, I think it's definitely important to really stress <laughs> how important that is and how influential and how big a factor it can be in a speaker's presentation. And once you hear it, once you get used to it, be warned, it's very impressive and it's totally addictive. And the German physics are exceptional in this regard. Their soundstage delivery is composed organized so clearly and cleanly layered, and there is a real ease about it. No edginess, nothing sounds etched. Music is delivered gracefully and smoothly in the main, very musical. And when you combine all of this together, it creates a sound that is very pull you into the music, but they still impress you with lots of individual things. So it's a very overall enjoyable, addictive, impressive speaker to listen to. And the cohesion of sound from the DDG driver works wonders for treble, mid-range, and vocal 
delivery. Starting with the treble, I've got to say I loved the treble from the HRS 130. For starters, it's adjustable from minus two to plus four decibels around eight kilohertz. And I really should have tried the different options, but flat sounded just about right to me because the treble was, I think, a perfect blend of precise, present clear, and sweet. Symbols sounded like symbols, not splashy, like symbols. The treble was maybe just a little safe if I'm being really picky and maybe a little bit more attack could have been a good thing, but that is me being really picky and obviously that is what the adjustment level is for. And vocals were just as impressive in the main, clean, clear, and precise, but with a fair amount of sweetness that I really enjoyed. And vocals were presented a little further back in the soundstage than I'm used to, but you quickly adjust to it because it feels a natural part of the overall speaker's presentation. And I think female vocals sounded particularly fantastic and some male vocals too, but maybe some of the deeper, more gruffer types of male vocals didn't sound quite as gruff on these speakers as they have with some others that I've listened to. But I need to be careful there because this possibly is just because of how the speaker were interacting in my room from a bass point of view, which is then totally related to my room's acoustics. The HRS 130 have essentially a 10 inch sealed subwoofer built into them, but they don't sound like typical subwoofers. I think German Physics have tuned the speaker's bass to be fast on transients and smooth, favoring a smooth extension over a punchy output. For most audio files, probably for the majority of music, their bass would be more than enough for quantity. But I am greedy and some more bass would have been better for me. But I cannot fault the quality and bass control, especially with deeper notes. And I think the Emperor amplifier is a big part of why I was able to hear this. It has an insane amount of control over the speakers. And listening to a drum solo from a live album I used to test speakers bass, I was pretty stunned actually by the speed and clarity of the double kick drum. But what about negatives? Well, I don't know if this is a negative really, but I think the HRS 130 will sound better with an amplifier with a good amount of power. And probably one engineered a certain way to sound a certain way to deliver their best sound. And I also found myself listening to very different music to what I would normally listen to. I wasn't listening to quite as much as my Guilty Pleasure music with this system and the Guilty Pleasure music for non-regulars to the channel is maybe more heavy, hard-hitting electronic music. And that is possibly because the sound of this combination is very serious, maybe not quite as much fun as some other speakers that I've had into review before. But again, I need to be very careful here because I feel like if I'd have added maybe one or two very good subwoofers, I could have maybe just balanced the system a little bit differently in my room for bass and then <laughs> it potentially could have been absolutely outstanding for you know guilty pleasure electronic type music. But again, I need to stress this. This is related to the speaker's placement in my room and the room's effects on the speaker's bass. Again, room acoustics. But I do think the HRS 130, especially with the Emperor amplifier, they take their music delivery very seriously. And that definitely affected me in terms of the music that I was listening to with them seeking out music that maybe sounded more spacious, more three-dimensional in terms of the way it's being produced. And I definitely I definitely was enjoying different music for different reasons to what I normally would. So for me, from a review point of view, it's been actually very interesting and really quite fun to do this. So how much does all of this excellent cost? The HRS 130 start at 16,000 500 pounds, which puts them in price competition with maybe the Bowers and Wilkins 803 D4 and of course a lot of other speakers. But this particular pair of HRS 130 have a high polish polyester paint finish and that is a premium. So these cost 18,800 pounds. So who are the HRS 134? Well, I think if you are an audiophile with this kind of budget and you really value soundstage, well then I think you owe it to yourself to seek out these speakers and have a listen and have a demo of them for yourself. Because I think you'll be surprised by how well they do things right in lots of regards, but the soundstage, their soundstage delivery is worth demoing these speakers for alone. Because the way they do it, I can really, really only think of maybe a, you know, a handful of speakers that I've heard before that have created a soundstage like this. And they have generally cost a hell of a lot more money. So I just wanna say again, if you're into soundstage, if it's really important to you, then you really owe it to yourself to listen to these speakers. And they do so many other things right. 
<laughs> I can highly recommend them to everybody, actually. These, these are speakers you should definitely listen to. They're different, they do things differently, but that might be inspiring to you, and that might be, or it might have been exactly what you've been looking for all this time, providing, again, you could have the speakers out into the room for listening sessions. So I hope you found this review interesting. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you have, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel, obviously, if you haven't already. Of course you have. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.